In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Christ is risen. Alleluia. And he has overcome death. It's Easter Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Siamé, a selection of Don Bosco. Stay tuned. It is Saturday, the 11th of May, 2024, sixth week of Easter and the second day of our novena to Pentecost and participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Seminarian Augustine Barasa from Bungoma Diocese in Kenya, who celebrated his birthday on the 8th of this month, takes for us the first reading. Mary Kopisa from Accra, Ghana, celebrating her birthday today, takes for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Stephen Kweku Daniels from Takoradi, Ghana. Let us pray. O God, whose Son at his ascension to the heavens was pleased to promise the Holy Spirit to the apostles, grant we pray that just as they received manifold gifts of heavenly teaching, so on us too you may bestow spiritual gifts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. Apollos showed by the scriptures that the Christ was Jesus. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Acts chapter 18 verse 23 to 28. After spending some time in Antioch, Paul departed and went from place to place through the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Now a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was an eloquent man, well versed in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him and expounded to him the way of God more accurately. And when he wished to cross to Achaia, the brethren encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to receive him. When he arrived, he greatly helped those who through grace had believed, for he powerfully confuted the Jews in public, showing by the scriptures that the Christ was Jesus, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 47, verse 2 to 3, 8 to 9, and verse 10. Response is taken from Psalm 47, verse 8. And the response is, God is king of all the earth. God is king of all the earth. All peoples clap your hands. Cry to God with shouts of joy. For the Lord the Most High is awesome, the great king over all the earth. God is king of all the earth. God is king of all the earth. Sing praise with all your skill. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. God is king of all the earth. The princes of the peoples are assembled with the people of the God of Abraham. The rulers of the earth belong to God, who is greatly exalted. God is king of all the earth. 
Gospel acclamation. John 16, 28. Hallelujah. I came from the Father and I have come into the world. Again, I am leaving the world and going to the Father. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John chapter 16, verse 23 to 28. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Truly, truly, I say to you, if you ask anything of the Father, he will give it to you in my name. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. I have said this to you in figures. The hour is coming. When I shall no longer speak to you in figures, but tell you plainly of the Father. In that day, you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall ask the Father for you. For the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me, and have believed that I came from the Father. I came from the Father, and I have come into the world again. I am leaving the world and going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On his third missionary journey, Paul encountered Apollos. Apollos came from Alexandria, and it is good for us to know something about Alexandria at the time of Paul in the first century AD. Alexandria, for those of you who have been to Egypt, is the second largest city in Egypt. It was founded in the 4th century BC by Alexander the Great, to be precise, in April 331 BC. And that's why it gained the name Alexandria from Alexander. After Alexander captured the Egyptian satrapy from the Persians, he wanted to build a large Greek city on Egypt's coast that would bear his name. He chose the site of Alexandria, envisioning the building of a causeway to the nearby island of Pharos that would generate two great natural harbors. Alexandria was intended to supersede the older Greek colony of Naucratis as a Hellenistic center in Egypt and to be the link between Greece and the rich Nile Valley. A few months after the foundation, Alexander left Egypt and never returned to the city during his life. But you know what? At the time of the Romans, at the time of Jesus, and at the time of Paul, Alexandria was second to Rome in terms of size. In fact, it was one of the world's most civilized cities. To go to Alexandria was to go to one of the best places in the world. It was next to Rome in terms of significance and value. So that whoever got educated in Alexandria was respected. And here is Apollos, having come from Alexandria, a civilized nation, a civilized city. You may call it Africa quite all right that was very civilized and that city was for the intellectuals philosophy was studied there and many of the people who were coming from there were intellectuals here is an intellectual coming to know about christ and he did not hesitate to start preaching christ if you think Christianity is for the uneducated, you are mistaken. From the very beginning, we had very educated people who came into Christianity and it has reached where it has reached because we had intellectuals who developed its doctrine, 
whom God called and made sure that they continued the work of making Christ known to the world. Apollos wasn't very well versed in scriptures. Apollos was not very well informed on the ways of Christ, but he was enthusiastic. What God actually wants from us is our passion. The rest is going to put into us. He only wants to see us fully involved. He only wants to see us available to him. And they will do the rest. He will use people like Aquila and Priscilla to train us. These two represent the seminary formators who help us. They are the Aquila and Priscilla. They help us understand the doctrine. The rest belongs to us. Our enthusiasm, our passion to make Christ known. This is the first time in the third missionary journey that we are hearing of Apollos. But we know that he was going to become one of the competitors of Paul to an extent of bringing conflict there because many people were taken up by his eloquence. He was so eloquent that people could just be smiling as they heard him speak. This man knew the difference between preaching and lecturing. He knew when you are preaching, you have to be appealing. When you are lecturing, you don't have to be appealing. You just have to read sometimes the material given in front of you. You sit down on a desk and you start reading that material. It is that boring to be a lecturer. Unless as a lecturer you are also a teacher. If as a lecturer you are also a teacher, you will make sure you do that with passion. There are people who have carried lecturing into the word of God. Excuse me, the word of God must be preached, not lectured. And when you preach, let people know the sweetness of that word. So that, like Apollos, we may attract them to things of God. We may make them come to treasure what is sweet about God himself? When you are telling people, let us say about the gospel passage of today, then you just say, truly the Lord is saying, if you ask anything of the Father, he will give it to you in his name. That's what John chapter 16 verse 23 to 28 is telling us. You know what? You're not selling the product well. No, it has to be sold well. Be as convincing as you can be. Tell people, you know what? You are never a loser in prayer because the promise of the Lord is that when you bend your knee and request anything in the name of the Lord, it will be done. It will be given to you. You may not get it right there. But the promise that he has made is true because the word of God never lies. So do not think when you get up from your knees, your prayer has not reached the source. No, your prayer has reached, but God alone knows when that will be answered. So trust him, rely on him. And you are going to see the power of God at play in your life. Because the one you are bending your knees to loves you so much. And he wants the best out of your life. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Saturday to you. Thanks be to God. Amen.